case this is our second day in Mexico City. We are in Madero Street, central Mexico. And we're about to go out. It's a beautiful day. And we are going to be doing some video blogs of our time here. And part of these videos will be going on Ray Gano's conference online when he has a special conference all about expats um, in countries abroad. So we're staying at the Cali Madero, the Ritz Hotel. <laughs> Around the first street is the uh, Torre Americana. It was built in 1965 and it's 44 storeys and it's Mexico City's Empire State Building. So it's 10 in the morning and what's the temperature already? Paul? 26 degrees centigrade. And um, yeah, it was a guy showing some shoes. And you know, you will see here. A lot of stores that you're used to seeing, and of course there's McDonald's everywhere, <laughs> as you would imagine. And again, this is just, just at the end of the street that we're staying in. here the architecture is gorgeous and there's so many features the styles are so varied and some of it looks you can see the art deco influence um, they have a lot of influences actually and we will film little bits here and there to show you it really is stunningly beautiful so we will be back in this area towards the end of, of the tour, not to this particular hotel but one in the area and then we hope to, to go on the canal trip. Looking forward to that because apparently it's very lively and very, very colourful and um, lovely food. So we're looking forward to that. And it's really, it's still quite hot today and um, yeah, it, it's lovely. There, there, there is plenty of places you can sit outside, nice parks, um, if you want to sit in the shade. And we're very fortunate that with this hotel, they have a courtyard right in the centre um, of, the, of the building. So it's lovely to sit here and it's nice and cool. And like we've said before a few times, the architecture is beautiful. And um, see the lovely curvature there on the building. <coughs> the pottery here, the ceramics are absolutely beautiful and we will be visiting potteries at some point during the trip. It's so clean here and um, constantly people are out cleaning during the day and in the evening, painting, just maintaining the place. It's like that everywhere here. Always um, road speakers out. Not that Scotland is filthy, <laughs> but it really is very clean here. It's beautiful. So how is 
Pretty good, pretty good. Welcome to the risk itself. Thank you. Again. Let's go. <laughs> go ahead now. See you. Okay. Go ahead. Hi guys, and we finally found Edgar. Um, he was on a break earlier, so we managed to catch up with him. And this has been a real treat because when we first got here five weeks ago, Edgar was basically the first Mexican person probably we met. We, we might have a taxi driver actually, mm -hmm. but Edgar really was the first. And he was so welcoming, and it was lovely, you know, when you're just off the plane in a new country, don't know what to expect, and he was so nice, and we were like, oh, um, and he was always so pleasant whenever he saw us, and just a proper gentleman, so we didn't get a chance to interview him then, five weeks ago, but we thought, hopefully we can catch Edgar at the end of our tour, and we did. So, can I introduce Edgar Sanchez Ramirez? Ramirez. Ramirez. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you guys. And Edgar has very kindly agreed to answer a few questions for us. So let's let's fire in. Edgar, the ever smiling Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So please share um, with us, have you always lived in Mexico? Uh, I was born and raised in Mexico City. Uh, I study here uh, my first grace, but then I moved to the United States. Uh, it was around when I was nine years old. Wow, and I so went to, with your parents? Yes, uh, it was just me and my brother, then my mom went to the United States, so she kind of like brought us to the, to the United States, and we lived there for about two or three years in the United States. Okay, and what, how was that as an experience? How did you find that? It was very nice. It was a very nice experience because I was used to living here in Mexico City. But then I, when I went to the United States, it was a whole new world. So sure. it opened up to me. Mm -hmm. I went to middle school, high school, and oh. two years of college there in the United wow. States. Wow. Sacramento, that's, California. That's awesome. California? Yes, that's what I learned to speak English. Your English is very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And California must have been hot, so. Yes, yes. You would yes. be used to that. <laughs> yes, but sometimes it's very hot and sometimes it's very cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so when you came back to Mexico, what was it like? Did you settle in quite quickly again? No, it took me, uh, actually, it took me quite a while because, um, as, as uh, you mentioned, uh, it's like a whole new country. Mm -hmm. When I came back, I experienced the same thing also. Oh, wow. I came back and I was like, a whole new, it was a whole new person, I was a whole new country. And, even though I was born and raised here in Mexico City, it took me a while to get used to it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite an experience. And did you still have family here that you met up with again? Yes, yes, I have my grandma and my aunts and my cousins here in Mexico City. Oh, that's good, that's good. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, the guests that you get here. What can I guess? What countries do the guests? We get many, many, many guests from everywhere in the world. We get people from Spain, we get people from North Europe, Europe, Russia, and many, many countries. Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, London. We get people from South America, Argentina, Brazil, Chile. We get people from North America, United States, Canada, Alaska, and some of the most um, far away guests that I believe I, we had it was from Morocco. Oh. I never, I never, um, and from Israel, and from wow. Israel also. Wow. It was quite a good experience because they, they didn't speak English, they didn't speak Spanish, and I didn't speak uh, <laughs> uh, Moroccan oh. or. Um, with the language from Israel, so it was quite, it was quite an experience. We were like kids trying to talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, it was more like an insight. Yeah. So then we got we got to build up like this sort of communication, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we kind of like made it better for our guests. Mm -hmm. It was quite a good experience. Yeah, actually. that's amazing. And um, I remember you told us before uh, Chinese people. Oh as well. yes, we get people from Asia. We get people from China. We get people from Japan. We get people from Indonesia, Philippines, 
we get all kinds of people, all kinds of people. Everywhere. That's really quite a variety, isn't it? And it, it's interesting you talking about hand signs because we're not that familiar with Spanish language and we only know a few phrases, but it, it, it's amazing how you can communicate well even just with hand signs. Yes, we have to because we have to give, uh, we have to give a service, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard because it's. I mean, we we, don't, we have to meet each other mm -hmm. in the middle so we can kind of communicate so we can give our best service to the guests. Sure. Yes, it was quite an experience. Sure, and we found as well that some of the words are quite similar. Obviously, oh, having the Latin, you know, background. Oh, perfect, perfecto. Terrific, terrifico. You know, there's a lot that, that you can get by even if you don't, you can understand each other. So yes, yeah. So we kind of like once we knew a word that we were kind of like we knew each other. Yeah. We kind of like based from that. We, yeah. we built from that, so we can get and um, communicate with our guests. It was quite an experience actually. That's awesome. It was a very nice experience. I never experienced that before. Sure. I wonder how my guests felt when they were talking to me. But it was kind of, it was good, you know, good yeah. experience. So how long have you worked here? I've been working here for three years. Three years? At the Wings Hotel. That's great. Yes, but um, I've been working in the hotel business for about nine years. Oh, that's yes. good. And um, it's funny how even if, if we don't know the right words, it's amazing how far a smile can go. Uh, and just being pleasant to people. Uh, one thing that I learned in the hotel business is if you give up your great smile, it will break any barrier, any language barrier. And the guests will feel comfortable and we can build from there. Sure. Because we're here to serve our guests, so we kind of have to find a way yeah. so we can kind of like break the language barrier. Yes, yes, absolutely. Because uh, sometimes our guests come, you know, they come from the, the countries, they come tired or they come you know, stressful, hungry. So we're gonna, we're gonna, kinda, we're gonna have to let them cool down, you know? Sure. Let them get settled, and that way we can mm -hmm. continue with their service. And that's wise, isn't it? Yep. Especially if they're off the plane and they're exhausted and just want to s sleep. They don't really want to start making small talk. And I know, <laughs> I've been, I have been having guests that have been on the plane for like 30 hours, 40 hours. Oh. And they're like, oh, I just want to go to sleep, I will oh. see you tomorrow. Yeah. So we kind of like have to measure that. Sure. You have to be really careful because sometimes you can you can say something and the people might take it like a like a bad comment, so you sure. have to be really careful with that. Got to be wise and yeah. Um so can you share in your opinion the the pros and cons of living in Mexico, the, the, the good things, the bad things? Of course, of course. Um like any 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 other big city, uh, I believe there's a lot of crime in every big city, you know, yeah. and even in Mexico City Sometimes you get like the people, you know, like people panhandling, or people that just go, you go on the bus, you go on the, in the subway. Mm -hmm. And you know, it happens in every big city, I believe so. Yeah. That's one of the things in Mexico City. There's a lot of people that, you know, just like any big city, they, they kind of like take your stuff away, you know. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes uh, we've been having a lot of bad press these last years because of the, some of the issues that have been happening in Mexico, you know, like the politicians and the, the you know, unfortunately, the drug trafficking. Yeah, yeah. But many, many of our, uh, of our guests, when they come here, they come to Mexico City and they be like, "I never seen any of that, mm -hmm. and I never seen no violence, I never seen no shootings, I never seen no people just fighting for drugs and anything like that." So it's, I believe it's, it's kind of like a bad press also, yeah. and that will be the cons. The the pros will be. I mean, we have so many history here in Mexico City. We have many, many places to see, many things to go, many sightseeing. We have, uh, we, I believe we're one of the countries that with a few uh, archaeological sites like the pyramids. I believe we are one of the ones that have the pyramids. And we also have a lot, a lot of history in, uh, here in Mexico City. So there's many, many, many things to see, many places to go many food, many uh, gastronomical food, it's been known uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. wow. It's been known for that. And um, yeah, the, the amount of museums here, and it's very arty, 
musical. You, you, you always see someone with a guitar or you know singing all the time. It's it's really a <laughs> upbeat. Yeah, but like a, kind of like a street musician. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have that here. Yeah. yeah. Many, many, many. And um, when we were leaving the last place, we've been doing a tour all round. So um, when we were coming here, we got a taxi, and and he was sharing his experience as a taxi driver. And similar to you, he went to he went to America, didn't mm -hmm. he? Mm -hmm. And he worked there for years. Worked really hard. Saved up money. Came back got married and able to support his children. But he was sharing, we felt it was sad that um, the wages here aren't great. And he told us what he earned and it was like, oh my goodness, not much to, to even buy milk and bread, really. You know, it was like, wow. Yes, that's one of the things that I encountered when I came back to Mexico City. The wages from another country, compared to Mexico City, are really low. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to find a way where you can just you know, make a living, make mm -hmm. a good living. Like, for example, me that I was living in the United States, I was used to this kind of life. I was used to this kind of life. So, when I came back, it was one of the, the things that I struggled with, the wages, which is very different. So I kind of had to find, a, I had to find a job where I can make my uh, my living the way I used to. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am the living proof that you can do that. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And you know, I think you, the, the weather and the food, and there's so much going for it, you know. Yes. Um, and sorry to take up your time, your, your boss has been so kind um, to allow us to do this. Um, really, last last question, Edgar. Um, anybody who's thinking of coming here, um, Americans, Canadians, Europeans, anyone um, to live, maybe to retire to, um, have you got any little words of advice, any encouragement to give them that are maybe thinking of coming? Uh, it's a good thing that you mentioned that because we have a lot of people coming from America and from Europe that they've been retiring here in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, here in Mexico City, Cuernavaca, uh, Oaxaca and Guanajuato. We have mm -hmm. a lot of people that come over here and they just spend the rest of their life here. So uh, I encourage the people that never been here that really take their time and see with their own eyes. Don't believe what the bad press says because there's bad press anywhere. But I, will, I encourage the people that never been here to come and visit us. That way, I mean, you are the perfect example that that nothing you can see on TV. It's uh, exactly you know they, they do say if you look at any travel places and, and websites to do with expats and all that, they do say Mexico is one of the top places mm -hmm. people do come to, to retire to, and even very, very wealthy people, they wouldn't come here if they felt it was dangerous. Obviously you don't go and live next to the, the areas where there are uh, gangs and drug trafficking and all that, there are other areas to go to, Mexico is a huge country, um, so like Edgar says, you know, think about it, do your research and all that. Um, but yeah, we've certainly enjoyed it and we hope that our travel diary this last five weeks has been helpful um, and that you've got something out of it. And we thank you so much for watching. God bless. Thanks, thank Edgar. You, Edgar. Thank you, Edgar. You're welcome. I'll see you guys here in Mexico City. Thank you. Bye-bye,